Welcome back to the third and final part of this RPG dialogue system. In this episode, we're going to take a look at making things look a little bit nicer. We're going to add a little bit of animation to our UI. Uh, we're going to implement a uh, an old school typewriter text. And just to show you how easy it is now that everything's in place, we'll just create a new a new conversation. So let's jump straight into it. Now we can add a little bit of animation to our dialogue window just to give it a bit of a nicer feel. So if we click on our dialog box game object in the hierarchy, come over to animation, create, create a new animation subfolder inside the project. And our first animation will be default state. Now our default state needs to be outside of the camera's viewing area. So if we pull our dialog box outside of it, hit record, add our position property to it, and then close off our recording. That's our first animation done. Create a new clip. We're going to want a box opening animation. So again, from our starting position, we can hit record, we'll add the property of position again, move forward to 0.2 of a second and drag our box into view of the camera. Then finally we want to create a new clip again, box closing, and now for the box closing we want the starting position to be the final position from box opening. So the way we can do that, uh, just reopen a box opening script, not script, animation, sorry. We'll play it and we can see at our final position, we're at top of 541. So if we right click rec transform, Click Copy Component, navigate back over to our box closing, add the property of position, and then for our first frame, paste the component values, we can see that we snap back to our original position. So if we now record, sorry, we want to paste that while recording so it saves the values, and then jump over to 0.2 of a second and drag our dialog box out of view of the camera. So there are animation states done. Now uh, let's hook all these up together. Uh, I will cover animations in more detail in another tutorial. This is just, uh, just quite a simple implementation. So we want our default state to be our default state. We want to make sure that none of our animations are looping. So if we go into our animations folder, we can turn off loop time for each one. And then from default state, we can make a transition to opening. Opening needs to go to closing and then closing needs to go to default state. Now we'll run this by a parameter. We'll add a boolean of is open. So when we want to exit default state, we want to only do that when is open is equal to true. Then we'll hit our open animation. It'll end on its final frame and stay open. Now when we're finished, we want to close and that is setting that will happen when we set is open to false and uh, we don't need a, um, a parameter for that because this doesn't loop that will automatically trigger uh, so within our dialogue manager script when we start the conversation we want to first access our animator so we can make a private animator 
and in and in our way method we will get the component attached to the object animator simple as that if I can get the syntax right there we go and now in our start conversation we can do instance dot anim dot set bool is open to true and then in our read next we can set is open to false to close our conversation when our index reaches the length of the conversation. So let's see how this works. Let's run the game. As we see, it snaps to our default position. Start. Our box flies in. Do message one, two, three, and the next time I press it, that should make the box disappear. And there it goes. So then if we start again, repopulates with the first the first line of our conversation and everything seems to be working quite well. As you can see in just a few minutes we have a, a functioning dialogue system. Now just to wrap up we'll add a, a few little things in just to make it look a little bit better. So what we can do in our read next after we've populated uh, all the elements on screen outside of the method there. We'll check the current index and if the current index is greater than our current convo dot length sorry that will be greater than or equal to we can then set what did we call it nav button text e dot text equal to X. So what this will do is when we're up to the final line in the conversation, instead of having the greater than symbol, that should then change to an X to denote that you're about to end the conversation. Another interesting thing we can do is instead of just having our dialogue appear, we can have it type in character by character. Now to do this, we need to use another namespace that would be system.collections and we'll create a private IE numerator and we'll call it type text. Now what we'll do with the type text is we'll pass in a not a sprite, we'll pass in a string of text and in the IE numerator or the core routine, we will add one character to the output string each time the IE numerator fires. Now I'll show you what this means and I'll explain it a little bit more in detail. So we want our dialogue text To start off at nothing and then we'll add a bool complete we'll set that to false and while we're not complete we'll loop around now within this loop we want the dialog text element to plus equal text And we'll pass in an index. Now when we use an index on a string that'll get each individual character by its index. So what that should do is add a H, loop back round, add the E, loop back round, add the L, but we're gonna have to do a little bit of a wait. So in a core routine or the IE numerator we need to do a yield statement 
and again I'll cover core routines in more detail in another tutorial this is just a basic use case for one so we'll yield return new wait for seconds and we'll wait 0.02 of a second each time before we add the next letter to our string and if our index is equal to the text dot length minus one we'll set complete to true so let's see how that works it won't work because I've not actually called it never mind uh, okay so instead of setting our dialog text to equal that we can copy the dialog and do instance dot start core routine type text and pass in the dialog text there we go now that should work run again I'm not incrementing the index there we go so it was, what was happening there it was picking the first character index 0 of our text string but we were never telling it to pick the next one no hopefully it should work start the conversation hello my name is Mike welcome to com3 interactive start the next one and we type out all our conversation brilliant that can actually cause a little problem though that we'll fix in a moment I'll just show you what that is if we start a conversation and we're midway through a single line and we decide to skip you can see what happens we get an absolute mess so how do we fix that well we can add a private core routine and we'll just call it typing we'll set typing to the instance of the core routine when we give it the dialogue and what we can do we can just do a little check here so if typing is not equal to null in other words we are currently typing a new line we can type the line if we are typing a line we can make uh, we can do instance dot stop call routine we can stop typing and we'll make typing equal null and then we'll pass in the line itself and just as a final finisher here we can set typing equal to null at the end of our numerator let's see if that works play the game it's not working what are we doing sorry that's the wrong way around if typing is equal to null then we're not actually typing a line Let's try that one again. Start the conversation, type it out, and now when we run through, we can see that it doesn't concatenate with the previous line. And there you have it a simple conversation system that mimics old school RPG style just to show you how easy it is now that everything's in place we can do create dialogue new conversation convo2 we can add again yeah, we'll do four lines let's see how good of a story I can make this time we'll add salmon Mike yes 
can you please come off that damn computer? Yes, dear. <laughs> and that's a new conversation. If we go into our testing button and pass in conversation two rather than conversation one, and we hit play, start that. Mike, yes. Can you please come off that damn computer? We can see that we already have a second conversation. And just like that, we can also add a new speaker, Zach, named after my dog, who is named after Zach Wilde, fantastic guitarist. And yeah, go on, we'll give him that one. That's face five. Can throw face five in. Amend conversation two. And throw Zach in with his own little line at the end. Woo! That's not right. Uh, I know what I've done. We want to leave that to length rather than length minus one. So if we just rerun that, we should actually get woof, and we do. And there you have it, a very simple, very easy to use, old school RPG dialogue system. I hope this has been useful for you and I hope you'll be able to find some use for this. I've been Mike with Comp3 Interactive, I'll see you again soon.